Jai Hind, Jai Bharat, and welcome to Dev Talks. This is Adi Achind. We all wonder how does our defense forces actually work. They do a lot of work in their forward bases, in the ships, in the air bases, in the cantonments, right up to the Himalayas. There's a lot of operational work that happens. But what happens at the back end? How are things decided? How are things planned? How are things ordered? I think one of the biggest questions that all citizens have today. How is the process at the back end done? Why does it look at look so difficult for a normal person to understand? Is because there's loads of technicalities to understand that back end and some of the technicalities uh, which are associated with the higher defense organization of this country. Uh, I have with me a Marshal Rajiv Satyadeva, who's been an intricate part, if I may, of that particular organization and would be able to give us an insight. Uh, from past to present, what this organization is all about and how does it function? It will be an interesting episode for all those defense nuts that want to actually understand why things happen, how things happen, and when things actually happen. Sir, Jai Hind, and welcome to the show. Jai Hind, Adi, so nice of uh, getting me in. And uh, really, uh, very interesting because the way you introduced, first of all, yes, not only the... Um, those who are not in the defense forces, but those who are in the defense forces also don't know how the whole thing happens. At least 90% of the people are busy fighting war, preparing for war. How the decisions are coming, nobody knows. So whenever I cover this subject with uh, most of my uh, junior officers, uh, they are busy with at the level of an AOC in the Air Force and a brigade commander in the Army and so on. Beyond that, what happens, how the decisions happen, what is the struggle which the chiefs go through? What is the struggle which the nation goes through? And that is when what happens is what I'm going to cover today. And uh, nice that you are bringing in this subject. Uh, I, I have a format of giving a presentation in splits. So let's go ahead with my presentation so that I can collect up everybody into a format. Here we go, sir. So what I'll be covering now today is the linkages between the uniformed civil and the national leadership. And in the past, also give my perspective of the theaterization. When the whole thing happens, and we have these days, the buzzword is uh, theater command. So how the theater command will be and my perspective, it's got nothing to do with the uh, what the CDS is doing, but I don't know what this present CDS is doing. Yes, I was there with the previous CDS. But what my perspective in the last three years after I've left the previous CDS, will I'll touch upon that. So, okay, there's this little system which has happened in this time. Not to worry. Organizations are created because of a felt need. Any organization, be it a residential complex, be it a MNC, be it military, be it anything, there's a felt need that, yes, we require an organization for an output. And that is how the whole organization comes up. When an organization is created, there's a structure which is coming up with that. People are given to it. Some task comes up in that. And then the technology is thrown into it. And this organization takes up the resources. Uh, in management, we say it's an M6I, men are given, machine is given, money is given, material is given, time is given, we can call it minute, space is given to that organization, meter and information is given, and we are expecting this organization to give an output. The organization is efficient if there's an output coming out of it. However, they all, this organization operates in an environment which is constant state of flux. There's so much, I, I think my slides are cutting off. Anyway, this is what happens in an environment. So much is happening. Let's this, this I've given an example of the international environment. There's so much happening. Russia, Ukraine, the old environment changes. Xi Jinping thinks of something, whole environment. North Korea does a missile test. G20 in JNK has affected an organization. G20 presidentship has created so much in the world. Quad, yes, happening. Will you do military? Will you not do military? You know, the whole environment is constantly affected. I, I, okay. But the end state is, has that organization made the felt need, has it satisfied the felt need or not? We are looking into an outcome, effectiveness of the organization to go into the felt need. We are always worried about resources and output and efficiency of an organization. An organization is created, let's give an example, an IDS, Integrated Defense Headquarters, was created immediately after Kharkiv. Has mm -hmm. that 
that organization gave was very efficient it gave lovely outputs but has the outcome of this organization satisfied the felt need if not then what all has happened let's go into that let's see higher defense control or control an organization what does it mean it means an interaction of the political and military elements of a nation this is where i'm going to restrict myself to they are supposed to enable preparation for a war and also execute and prosecute a war this is what this organization you and me being soldiers can't go to a war just like that somebody has to prepare us somebody has to tell us okay shoo go now fight a war now that's the high defense organization and they also we use the military for non military threats all these decisions are taken at a very high level so primacy of the primacy of the political decision making just remember political leadership carries out the functions of decision making over formulation of national security domestic policy and military strategy civilians have the final say in a democratic country we are not talking about countries like myanmar where everything is controlled by the military and they take mm-hmm. the decisions but here the political leadership takes a decision i'll give you an example here balaport it wasn't thought overnight the balaport could have been there in the plans of the air force for years but only when the political leadership says go the things happen the authority is vested totally in the political leadership which is supreme so military strategy is seen as a legitimate and a lawful thing why because of political leaders who make the policy for this country actually told us to do it mechanics political powers to make decisions and execute policy and they make decisions and execute the policy let's see a historical perspective of from 1947 how the whole game happened i'll post independence and up to kargil 1947 we did not even have a constitution when few ics officers then three senior to these days we call them is officers they evolved the structure of the ministry of defense they were told how to make a ministry of defense so what they suggested was ministry of defense on the lines of ministry of home affairs can you imagine in 1947 we had senior military officers we had air marshals we had generals but they were not asked to design the ministry of defense the ministry of defense was designed by the is officers then in 47 and in 1952 we were made as attached officers to the ministry of defense ministry of defense which was actually the bureaucrats the is officers and the raksha mantri had the service headquarters at attached offices <laughs> what did isme say he said you should have a defense committee of the cabinet if you remember from 47 to 50 till the constitution came a lot of say in our making was by the britishers because they were sitting there right. and telling us how to go about it so defense committee on cabinet will be the apex body which will be the prime minister defense minister and the other ministers and service chief defense secretary financial advisor will be in attendance if required now dcc had two parts defense ministers committee where the defense minister will take all the service related issues with the chiefs defense secretary financial mod then the chiefs of committee the chiefs of staff committee that means the three chiefs will sit down and decide the service matters and this was in existence even before the independence there was nothing this only thing was a rotating chairman whoever is the senior most and the longest tenure will become the chairman of the chiefs of staff committee and we also had a secretarial support of the military wing of the cabinet secretary cabinet secretary came a little later let's go ahead in a chronological order post independence how the whole thing happened we had the defense committee of cabinet we had the defense ministers committee which was convened rarely to discuss the matters of the chiefs of staff and also the chiefs of staff exercise very little part in the decision making starting oh, right. in 47 itself in 1952 the service headquarters were designated as the attached offices of md i'll come to this a little later why is this a very small thing and not a big thing in the national decision making 1955 the designations of the service chief changed from cnc to the chiefs of staff 1961 this government came up with the allocation of business rule transaction of business rule and they were promulgated 
and the DOD, Department of Defense, was given the responsibility of Defense of India. This is where actually the entire documentation of how each ministry, how each human being who is getting salary from the government of India will function. Everything was given here. 1962, something happened in this country. So the Defense Committee of the Cabinet suddenly became an emergency committee of the Cabinet because of the Sino-India conflict. And they would sit down and discuss every morning with the Raksha Mantri as to what is happening. There was no formal agenda. However, there was informal agenda which was being discussed because on a daily basis, you have to monitor how the war is going. Correct. For 62, then they decided, let's have a cabinet secretary. And cabinet secretary became the senior most secretary. And he went above the service chiefs. Till then, we did not have anybody senior to the service chiefs. 1970, the emergency committee commission was merged into cabinet committee on political affairs. Agenda was no longer limited to defense because now it was the entire national security which was being discussed. And the, in other words, the ECC actually got dissolved. And service chiefs could be invited if there was something to do with the service matter. 76 to 91, the military wing was transferred from the cabinet secretary to the MOD. They said, okay, move to MOD. We don't require a military wing. Cabinet secretary lost that link between the military and the soldiers. Anyway, DOD constituted all COC matters were done here. Finally, what has happened is defense secretary was taking all the decisions for the military. And he became de facto serious. I'm using this word serious, though it was not non-existence then. But I can attach it here that all the matters which were to be taken were now moving here. 1947 onward, the concept of national security, Cabinet Committee on Security reactivated the DMC. We can discuss <laughs> a little setup here that 1947, how the nation was de decided that the de MOD will be, what will be the MOD structure, how the MOD structure will work, and where, how the service chief. You know, there is a feeling that service chiefs ne apni sari powers hand over kar di. No, no, no. In 1947 itself, it was decided how the whole game will work. Let's see if you sir, have any. You know, the, the interesting thing is that we've had military configurations right from 47, 62. You know, we had 67, small one, still, still in action. 75, 71, 75, we still again had something with the Chinese. So each time uh, were these policies changed to counter these uh, these actions and the uh, not counter, of course, the, the after report that comes out, uh, you know, where did we go wrong? And I'm sure that that actually happens. So uh, these changes that you've kind of described to us, are they the result of these military uh, conflicts that we've had or uh, just absolutely, sheer absolutely. learning from around the world? See, when we, when we talk about a nation going to war with another nation, we always think of military versus military. But these Correct. days, the buzzword is the whole of nation approach. So in 62, when something went wrong and we did not have a whole of military, whole of nation approach, that is when I think the cabinet secretary was brought in. Okay, let all the ministries get together and move towards a national uh, emergency or a national this thing. War approach. And the mm -hmm. cabinet. So that, that is all the cabinet. Uh, let, let's, I, I actually really don't know, but let's say the service chiefs after the 62 war said, this didn't happen, that didn't happen, this could have happened from this ministry, the railway could have helped us, this, the Air Force could, the Air Force could have helped. So that is when they said, okay, to get all the secretaries together, let's have somebody seen it to them. You'll be surprised, the Union War Book is a war book which is held by the cabinet secretary. I, I was incidentally a secretary to that war book. So Union War Book is held by the Cabinet Secretary, which is where he specifies how the 58 ministries and the 93 directorates, the, the 93 secretaries, will actually function towards the war. So there are instructions coming from the Cabinet Secretary to each ministry, each secretary, that this is what you'll do in the war. Maybe 62, the Cabinet Secretary was brought in because of this reason. And then we have an RMOP directive, which comes to us because the Def Sex War Book might not be that um, honored because the chiefs are senior to the Def Sex. So we take the instructions from the RM Op Directive. So Raksha Mantri issues you a Op Directive for five years, which is actually flowing out the out of the Union War Book. And the Union War Book 
the preamble is from the constitution of india so this is what the constitution said this is uh-huh. where the union war book goes this is how each secretary will give an order to his uh, his uh, ministry and we get instructions from the iim that's interesting because you know one one always wondered that uh, we've gone through a, a, probably two or three generations in terms of military operations and so how have we evolved to the point where we are today because there has to be a stem flow of uh, activities that would have happened to bring it to what it is and today you're talking about theaterization and you're talking about this and that and the other whole lot of uh, different things that we are we are, we are uh, going in for now so it, one really wonders the progression of uh, ab kahan yahan par is is jagah pe kaise pahunche you know and one of the biggest things people ask for is who's got the control over over uh, division between a day to day operations and long term strategic operations sir see we uh, i have very strictly say this that we are a very reactive country till uh, hmm. the first 50 60 years we were very reactive absolutely I, i was an economic student in uh, school maybe just about 20 30 years after our independence we did not have food to eat or you will not know that every day a ship that pl480 used to come from us and hand over rations to india which were yes. distributed on the ration card where every family was there i have stood on those queues to collect ration for our family every member of the family was mentioned in that card and we would get suddenly that ship stopped because we did nuclear we went nuclear mm-hmm. so that ship stopped and ration stopped coming today the world is begging us for rice and wheat we are a very reactive country you touch us and we will do this to us we <laughs> were refused a supercomputer by us you will not get a supercomputer because you don't deserve one today the world is depending on us for the software and the things that we are doing mm-hmm. we are a reactive country similarly whenever we and i think we are the only nation where the top leadership has given us the maximum number of times and okay to go for war starting from 47 48 beat hyderabad beat sikkim beat anywhere we are the only country 62 265 71 99 we are the only country where the top leadership had to sit together and give us an okay for so many times i don't think even israel has gone through so many times and okay to go for war so at every time something new has happened and every time we have been reactive and today the reaction by this government in 2019 was an ultimate reaction we will come to that in my next set of presentation that how the things have changed and uh, let's get to that then i think we have evolved we have evolved to a state what we have got today no military in the world even us or or any other democratic country has got the past the way this government has given to us so we have to we'll unfold it let's see we'll move it i mean you were about to say china china chinese military doesn't have past and looking at the uh, looking at the army. looking at the four admirals that just got whacked if i may <laughs> for the last two weeks they're they're, they're a different ball game the foreign minister goes missing and he vanishes and he's sacked <laughs> let's get back sir okay so let's see what is the constitutional framework this is how the indian constitution says the president of india mm-hmm. without prejudice to the generality of the foregoing provision the supreme command of the defense forces of the union shall be vested in the president and the exercise thereof shall be regulated by law is a very very important thing today the entire decision of the military is taken by the ccs the cabinet committee on security which is the prime minister and the however if something goes wrong in the political arena and we lose a government and we don't have a government the military is not let loose they are straight away to the president of india because the president of india is your supreme commander so see how the constitution was written now he says the defense of india and every part thereof is the responsibility navy military army air force everything is the responsibility deployment of any armed forces anywhere in the country powers jurisdiction everything is listed in the seventh schedule so all this is listed down so we can't say that we are actually loosened when people say that there is no national strategy no no everything is given in the constitution so beautifully yes the small nitty gritties have to be worked out on a reactive basis 
beautiful book came out in 1961, Allocation of Business Rule. Every person, every ministry had a rule book. Every ministry had a business. Every human being who wears a slick, a card in uh, the ministries all over has a duty attached to him. It is a very interesting thing, a very, very difficult document. Why I'm saying this is when we, the military guys, had to write this for the first time, it took us almost eight to nine to ten months to write down how something will happen. This is when the DMA came up. Anyway, now uh, it says allocation of business rule. A very important thing in the second para last line I'm saying is ministries, departments, secretariats, and the offices. This is the hierarchy of the allocation of business rule. The ministry will do this, the departments will do this, the secretariats will do this, and the officers will do this. And mind you, the services in 1952 were made attached offices even below this. So we were reporting to offices who were reporting to secretariats, who were reporting to departments, and finally the minister. See the dilution which was happening in our mindset. What we are trying to convey could get diluted all the way up. And uh, I'm confidently saying because I've spent almost 12 years in headquarter ideas dealing with the ministries, it was so difficult to actually go and sit and convince the section officer. This is what a journal wants. Now, section officer, as per his thinking, will put it up to the joint director, to director, to JS, to AS, and so on. Anyway, this oh. is how I, I just wanted to tell you where the military was in this whole allocation of business rule. Well, let's come to Ministry of Defense. There were four departments, Department of Defense, Department of Defense Production, Department of Defense Research and Development, and Department of Egg Servicemen. I'll put it in a different format. The Ministry of Defense, headed by the Raksha Mantri, Department of Defense had a secretary. Department of Ex Servicemen had, has another secretary. DP has another secretary. And the Chairman DRDO officials are the secretary of the Department of Defense and Research Development. This is the only ministry which has a secretary to each department. This is the only ministry. Mind you, even Ministry of External Affairs has a lot of departments, but secretary is only one. So these four were ones among the equal. So, But if you see the headings of these four, all the files from the Army, Navy, Air Force, Coast Guard, or ideas would go to the DEFSEC because everything pertained to DEFSEC. So loosely, we used to say file has gone to MOD. Actually, the file is not gone to MOD. The file would have gone to the DOD. But this DOD word was not in the air because we always thought DEFSEC is the MOD and his AS and JS. See what all the Department of Defense was controlling. Defense of India is his responsibility. Armed Forces, Army, Navy, Air Force is his responsibility. All the headquarters, integrated headquarters, Army, Navy, Air Force, Coast Guard is his responsibility. Reserve of Army, Navy, Air Force is his responsibility. See, we have 14 lakh active soldiers and about 12 lakh reserves. So you can imagine he's controlling nice. this 14 lakh and the 12 lakh. The entire territorial army is with him. The NCC is with him. Work services. Aapko ek chota sa, uh, security hut you have to demolish and rebuild is the power of the Ministry of Defense. That means Department of Defense. That means Defense Secretary. You will have to take permission from the entire canteen, the CST, which we keep saying Army, CST. No, that was with the Defense Secretary. The civilian services who are there in the defense are also his. Hydrographic is his. Cantonments were his. Acquisition is his. Defense accounts is his. Purchase of food is his. And the entire Coast Guard is under one gentleman who must have come to this department as a secretary for the first time. You would have not seen anything before this. But all the soldiers, journals who have spent 40 years in uniform will actually put up the file to this gentleman and he'll decide what is to be done. This was how the allocation of business rule was. Let's get on shift on to the cabinet. Cabinet has so many appoint committees. We will restrict ourselves to the appointments committee of the cabinet, where all our appointments, who will be the journal, where will he go, what all, can he go abroad? And his 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 going abroad for a, a marshal or a lieutenant journal is also cleared by the cabinet. So, and then the I last would. one is the cabinet committee on security. Yes, sir. Even uh, <laughs> every, the, where will the chief go is decided well in the beginning of the year that these are the four countries which we like to visit as for the strategic interest of the country. Anyway, 
Then comes the Cabinet Committee on Security, which is what we will deal with today. What does the Cabinet Committee on Security do? They deal with every defense-related issue. They deal with law and order of internal security. They deal with the foreign policy matters of internal, external security implications. They deal with economic and political issues impinging on the national security. They consider cases of capital expenditure. They clear all cases above 3,000 crores. Less than 3,000 are handled by the finance minister and the defense minister and right down to the vice chiefs. They deal with matters of atomic energy. They also review the manpower required for national security. You want to increase, increase 10 airmen in a squadron, it has to be approved by them. Who are there? Prime Minister is the chair, Defense Minister, Home Minister, the External Affairs Minister, and the Finance Minister. These are the five top members in the Cabinet Committee. And if you see the uh, charter, exactly, Defense, Internal Security, External Security, and the Finance, everything is handled by the, these five people take the decision. It's, it's a very, very nice thing which India does. Now the work, after the this thing, the work is allocated. These are the open documents which are available. Work is, what does the Department of Defense Secretary, that means the Defense Secretary, as we call him, gets. He gets to be the chief of all these four departments. That means all the four departments actually now starts, I mean, he's the one who will take up anything beyond them. If you see... He deals with the three services and with the inter-service organization. He is also responsible for defense budget, establishment matters, defense policy, matters relating to parliament, defense cooperation, coordination of activities. It, it is headed by defense secretary who is a signatory. And he is assisted by the director general acquisition who has the final say in acquiring anything. Additional secretary and joint secretary. This was how the work allocation was given to him. Now I know anybody who's listening to me and seeing all this, how is it possible for one human being to be actually effective to take decisions in every field? I'm not saying he's bad or good. He would have so many decisions to be taken. He's a superhuman being actually <laughs> to do all this. Now, Army, Navy, Air Force, what did we Out of all this, what was our role? Primary role for the Army, safeguard territorial integrity, Internal security, aid to civil power, disaster relief. What is Navy supposed to do? Protection of maritime interests. What is Air Force supposed to do? Air interdiction, air defense, recce, offensive air ops, aid to civil power, disaster relief. Coast Guard, EZ protection, SAR, pollution control at sea. Sorry, that is all was given to the Army, Navy, Air Force chiefs and Coast Guard. They are not in the decision making at all. They are war fighters, full stop. So... This is where I would like to stop before we go into Kargil. Uh, I mean, I somehow it's it's not. I mean, the guys who are actually doing stuff, they're not. Uh, they're just putting recommendations and putting a file up. That's it. The file goes up and goes up. It comes back with observations, and many a times the observations were. I have not understood what you want, but I will not tell you that I have not understood. This was a body language of that fight. You know, my uh, uncle once was uh, one of the JS in the Ministry of Finance in the defense. I, I mean, I was, uh, he, he is, he, if, if he was alive, he would have been 100 years plus today, but he is, uh, he was my real mamaji. What he tells me, he said there was a fight which came to him after going through so many years that the army has requested for 3,000 bulletproof jackets for the soldiers deployed in Srinagar. And I'm talking about maybe 30 years ago, how this whole gamut was. So very fine. One of the observations in the file was, please tell us how many lives have we lost in last 10 years. So lives lost in last 10 years were 900. They said, if you lost 900, why are you asking for 3,000? Per year, you're losing 90. So what is the requirement of three? This was an observation by one of the section officers in the file. So that means the army was supposed to identify those 90 who will be shot and killed so that the bulletproof jacket could be given only to them. This is what the joint secretary wrote on that and overruled everybody and gave them 3,000 bulletproof jackets. This was all happening before the Kargil, I mean, this, this has come out in the Kargil committee 
yeah. the review review committee also that these were the things were happening because that section also won't understand simple logic aapko 3000 chahiye but actually you are losing only 90 people per year so why do you want 3000 it's a standard uh, justification which we all want <laughs> so so this it's not we are a reactive nation but we have reacted very well now yeah, well okay. uh, <laughs> i mean there's there acha uh, at least you know you only learn when you get smacked across the face so i guess fair enough <laughs> it's that something that we will we should proudly accept <laughs> Nah. let's go sir you know, but you know uh, i i have dealt with some joint secretaries and additional secretaries and defense secretaries they were so understanding they actually were a team with you i mean i wouldn't mind naming them also they were a team they were so nice i am on uh, uh, whatsapp exchanges even today with them because on a friendly not not on official matter because all of us have retired but we actually enjoyed interacting with them and explaining them things and they would then pull the ears of the section come of officers they said clear karo isko what are you doing anyway we get to that let's move on let's see then kargil happened may july 99 kargil happened why did kargil happen i keep saying this in every presentation you know this it's not a yes it's a good thing we threw uh, the enemies out or we threw the adversaries out of our country but first of all how could they move into our country and make bunkers there yeah. i'm actually surprised how could they move in you know india knew about it or i'll say the indians knew about it and indians did not know about it those who knew about it they had nothing to do with it yes they are coming in making bunkers bunkers the information was available in the government machinery but they had nothing to do with it and those who had something to do with it then they never got this information till the time we were about to lose 500 plus soldiers so i i will not say that it was a war which we won First of all, why did we reach that stage that somebody sitting inside a house, somebody in India knows about it? He's got nothing to do with it. Those who were supposed to do something with it didn't. That is when Kargil happened, and immediately once the Kargil was over, 29 July, a committee was constituted by Mr. Vajpayee. He said, "Go ahead and find out what went wrong. I can't have a nation running like this. That people have moved in, and uh, so we you know, gentlemen, K. Subramaniam, his son is now lighting fire all over the world these years, these days." and general alari vargis and satish and we stayed they sat down and they came up with a report and this is what they said india is the only major democracy where armed forces headquarters outside the fx government structure this is what i was saying attached offices to offices to departments and so on chiefs of staff or operational commanders and not chiefs of staff to a pm and rm yes we didn't give them that role we gave them the role to fight and defend india we never gave them that role armed forces headquarters were developed a command rather than staff culture yes they were only fighting war decisions are not collegiate pm and rm have no benefit of views of expertise of armed forces they will only brief the defense secretary defense secretary as much as he understood he won't brief the pm and the rm because service chiefs may may not be called in a particular meeting this is how it no, that's funny that's funny sir i i so, i mean yeah, this basics of management call the guy who's doing the damn thing yeah but the, the damn thing is that you given defense of india to the defense secretary so obviously he's the guy resistance to resistance to change to inadequate knowledge of security i don't know but why will i change this is how the country works uh, if i let go that means my defense secretary par or whatever or whatever i'm doing I, I mean, government has given me these powers. How can I let somebody else come and say for me? So th- this was this was not a mistake with the defence secretary. This was not a problem of an individual. This is how our structure was. So status quo was always defended. Civil understanding everywhere you've seen. This is what the Kargil Review Committee said. I've just pulled out this thing out of that. Locating service headquarters in government will further enhance civilian supremacy. which has happened attached office under they now uh, working as under this the defense secretary because one of the offices effective and appropriate national security planning and decision making structure for india because now we want nuclear 98 we went nuclear so 99 they said come on damn it we have to have a different nuclear structure we can't commit same mistakes the way we committed elsewhere and national security management and apex decision making we will have to come up with the new structures between mod and armed forces headquarters this is what the kargil review left it with us please study it and reorganize it tomorrow they did not give any structure they said please go ahead do it 
So then the NSCS, intelligence, CT ops, border management, there were so many things, recommendation which they gave and that kept on happening till we, okay. Then it went to the group of ministers and within no time, Mr. L.K. Adwani, George Fernandez, just one thing, if you see Home Minister, Defence Minister, External Affairs and Finance. And the fifth person in the CCS is the Prime Minister. So these four were made in charge to go through the Cartier Review Committee and come up with the recommendations. So there's a service headquarter will not be anymore called attached offices. They'll be integrated headquarters. Made no difference. Aha, okay. Okay. Just the word change from attached to integrated. So Air Force said, mm -hmm. karma hai se. And then this is delegate the financial powers. And today, the vice chiefs, I, I don't know if it has changed, can buy things up to 500 crores under revenue budget. Yes. Without yes, going sir. to the Ministry of Defense. And similarly, a 300 crores for this thing on uh, the capital without going to the back to the, the acquisition. And then this Army Navy quickly became integrated headquarter. Air Force said it makes no difference. Why will we do it? So they did not. Anyway, so the cosmetic changes came about, but nothing much happened. One thing which the committee said, the chief CDS, they used this word CDS. He says COSC will be enlarged with the CDS as a permanent chairman and chief permanent chairman and VCDS will be a member secretary. CDS will be designated as a principal military advisor to the government of India. Very nice. This is what the Kargil Review Committee said. CDS yeah. will ex exercise administrative control over SFC. He will not hold the nuclear button. He will over oversee the administrative requirement of the SFC. CDS will facilitate it. Efficiency and effectiveness in planning, budgeting process to ensure optimum utilization of resources. And cre creation of CDS will promote jointness. This is what they said about CDS. And he will be a four-star officer. Why this word four-star was brought in? Because all secretaries are supposed to be four-stars and cabinet secretaries five-stars. So, oh, he clarify Kardia that he will remain four-star. He will be permanent chairman. Rank premise, it makes no difference. Never revert back to his parent service so that now he starts thinking tri services. Otherwise, if he has to go back, you know, Adi, I came to ideas four or five times. Mm. And every time I will go back to Air Force and I will do something in ideas which was integrated. When I do something integrated, it could go against my service and I will get a warning call from the YC. So, no, that is where this is that he will never revert back. And CDS will always consult the chiefs before presenting his advice. And individual chiefs, if they don't like what the CDS is saying, can go beyond him also, go to the RM and convey their this thing. So this is what came about with the chiefs of staff. And these things were created. Two joint commands were established, the strategic forces. SFC was administratively under CIA. Andeman Nicobar command was created. And ANC was reporting to the COSC chairman, chief of staff, to the headquarter ideas. So headquarter ideas was actually doing the administrative work for Andeman Nicobar command. One beautiful thought thing was added, role of defense secretary, if CDS becomes this, no dilution in the role of defense secretary. I'm talking about 2001. Defense secretary to be designated as a principal defense advisor to the RM. CDS will be an advisor, but he'll be the principal. CDS and defense secretary to enjoy an equal status in terms of their working relation. Defense Secretary must enjoy equivalent status so that when he functional relationship in concern, meeting convened by the DefSec will be attended by CDS and the service chief and vice versa. See, they brought in a chapter on Defense Secretary without diluting him. Mm. As it is, he's doing so much. Where is the CDS now? This is what was left in 2001 and also left by al Wani and team that please reorganize the structure later in your own time after giving it a thought. Then came Naresh Chandra committee. They also were set up and they gave about 309 recommendations. We stop here. We come to what has happened in 2019 after this. See, basically what I wanted to say was, Kargil was another reactive incident yeah, which happened. Absolutely. So mm. very nice of the government that time. Quickly within three, four days of Kargil getting over, set up a committee of the best of the people in this country. They came up with the recommendations, gave truthful recommendations, and the four important ministers, Home Minister, Finance, Defense, and the External Affairs, sat together and within no time implemented all. Only thing they missed out was they gave an integrated headquarter, they gave the VCDS, but they could not decide on the CDS appointment. So you created an organization 
which in my very first slide organization was created, it was the resources were being pumped in, output was coming out, it was an efficient organization, but was it actually servicing the felt need of the nation? No, mm. because it did not have a chief. So if you don't have a chief, a three-star chief of the integrated defense staff, so-called CISC, was unit of the three chiefs. So even they if he wanted to do an integration, mm. he had to go through the three of them. So this is where the nation was stuck. But let me tell you, headquarter ideas in last 15, 20 years till then, 19 years to be precise till the CDS came, done a lot of tri-services thing because if anything joint was to be done, Air Force will say it's not their job. Army will say it's not their job. Navy will say it's not their job. So it can land it up with the ideas. Now, whenever the CISC had to do something, he would go to the COSC and tell them, this is what I'm going to do joint for you. All the three services will sit together with the ideas and they would come out with a decision which will move on. So it was not that it was not functional or it was not happening. Anywhere jointness used to happen, it was happening but going slow because while joining, you could align one service which was not aligned in this game plan. That is how it was getting a little slowed down. Uh, I guess you know it's 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 also the factor that you slow and steady learn. It's it's something that that as uh, you know if it's if all this was kind of structured for us, we wouldn't have got the value of it. If I may just say that, Abhi, for a time, start of course, of course, it's too late. There's no question about it. But you know, uh, I I look at it one thing very very simply, sir. In terms of the defense, and correct me if I'm wrong, if you feel this way, ki yaar, theek hai, whatever mistakes you made, you made. Keep them as a known fraction of the equation, right? So that you don't repeat them again. But don't keep harping about that fraction because you'll miss the future then. Absolutely. So that's that's the way I look at it. I mean, it's 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 sad, but whatever it is, it's it's part of life. So fair enough. Let's so stick with that and move when, on. <laughs> when you say it is sad because you're listening to the past which I am now yeah. covering with you. But yeah, those yeah. who have lived through this past, you can imagine how frustrated, frustrating it was for them. I'll give you some examples when I move on. Can we move on? Okay. Absolutely, sir. Now we come to 15th August 2019. What did the Prime Minister say? I'm just, I'll just read out the red ones and then consolidate them. He said, yeah. important that we take timely steps toward reforms. Deliberations are on for long. 2001, Cargill Review, so on. All reports have brought to light same issues. There is indeed coordination between services, but each service is striving to become modern in their own way. I mean, there is just no linkage between an aircraft carrier, Rafales, and the uh, battlefield tanks. How, how do you link them? Each is modernizing in its own way. India, too, should not have fragmented approach. Have to work in unison. One service is ahead of the balance two services. All should move simultaneously at the same pace. There should be good coordination, which should be relevant. Now we will have a CDS. We'll get effective leadership. This was a compelling task, dream to reform the strategic pace of Hindustan in the world. This is what our Prime Minister had to say. Military reforms, all reports have brought the same thing. There's coordination between modernity and have to work in unison. One service, all should move simultaneously. Good coordination. We will now have a CDS. This is in nutshell what the Prime Minister announced. You know, this, uh, he was to announce it on 15th. On 13th morning, or 13th uh, afternoon evening, a letter comes from the DOD, Defense Secretary, that PM wants to announce something about the CDS or COSC on 15th. What are your comments? Please give it to us by tomorrow, 10 o'clock. <laughs> now imagine the CIS cannot give these comments. CIS had to go to the Army Chief, Navy Chief, and Air yeah. Chief. All three, tomorrow morning, by 10 o'clock, give a consensus report. It's practically not possible. So awesome. by the time we got all the details in it, code ideas, it was 1 o'clock. And all three had not uh, ex said exactly the same things, obviously. And by then they said, oh yeah, PM has already decided what he's going to say. And this is what he said. It came as a shock. He's announced a CDS. What is this? Because and the whole ministry was working on, you know, every ministry gives a report to the PM as to what is to be said where. And then he decides what is to be said. This is what he said. So now what happened on 1st of January 2020 when the CDS came about? CDS was announced. 
on in uh, on 15th august finally yeah. the document came out on 30th of uh, december 2019 and first january onward the cds came and what all happened another department was added in the department of ministry of defense department of military affairs we had department of yeah. defense yeah. defense production not department of military affairs dma was brought in this was what the allocation of business rule for the defense secretary was which i have just shown you number 2 omitted number 3 omitted number 5 omitted number 7 omitted number 14 omitted what has happened so what happened they cut the department of defense like we discussed too much to be handled by the defense secretary things must have been moving slow because of that they carved out another department of military affairs exactly out of the dod so what happened they gave a new allocation of business rule to the cds number 1 armed forces were removed from the defense secretary army navy air force given to the cds integrated headquarters ministry of defense army navy air force headquarters were removed from this do defense secretary given to the secretary dma territorial army removed work services related army navy air force removed procurement exclusive to service except removed now 6 7 8 were three new things added which were not there earlier with dod but given to department of defense military affairs it was promoting jointness in procuring training staffing service through joint planning integration of their requirements and if you see the seventh one which i have underlined including through the establishment of joint and theater command this came as an allocation of business rule for the secretary of dma there is no debate ki theater command hoga ki nahi hoga it has come as an order from the cabinet that you will make theater command and <laughs> promote the indigenization equipment by services that is when the negative import list started came out now we call it a positive indigenization list more than 400 items cannot be bought from abroad unless the rn clears it now that is the class 450 items cannot be bought from abroad it could be anything from radio equipment to a bullet or a bulletproof jacket or whatever even aircraft and ships are in it so this is how the uh, this thing was given so cds will administer a tri service organization tri service cds will be the member of defense acquisition council he will function as a military advisor to nuclear command bring about jointness assure optimal utilization of infrastructure now everything started getting together the cds started working together and he had 3 years to do this it was given 3 years by the pm an interesting thing that started happening was cds is now wearing three hats he was chief of defense staff that means he became the boss of the headquarter ideas where we had a vcds who was known as sisk now we had a chief who was of the integrated staff he was secretary of the department of military affairs dma so he was now secretary to the government of india and he was also chairman of the chiefs of staff committee bob well, bob now head of the head of the chiefs committee cds enjoys both warrant of precedence 12 because of being chief and 22 because of being secretary so those days the negativity said oh you have demoted him no no you not demoted him you have actually given him 12 and 22 both what is the importance of this comes up here this is what the kargil review committee said we have just seen this india not major democracy outside government what changed armed forces headquarters is now inside the apex government structure earlier the defense secretary used to attend all the meetings of the pm today the cds attends the secretary dma who is also wearing a hat of cds and the chairman chief of staff committee attends every meeting of the government so he knows what his pm is saying now the pm yeah. has rm have got their own chief of defense staff their decisions are collegial they direct connect with the armed forces of the pm and the rm through the cds civilian resistance ke department kaise hoga attached office all this is gone because you have a whole department of your own civilian ascendancy is all removed service headquarters directly under the cds now they are not under a civil bureaucracy national security planning and decision making structure has changed apex decision making structure which the kargil review committee said baad mein soch lena has been restructured in one shot so now the cds had additional secretaries and joint secretaries in uniform with them <laughs> every 100 days every 100 days the pm takes a review from all the secretaries and our uh, one of the chiefs attends it now as an authority he is there because he is one of the secretaries see the game uh, positivity of going down from 12 to 
presidents because now you are with the PM understanding him. And he's so senior that the PM has Raksha Mantri, RRM, NSA, Cabinet Secretary, and the CDS. They're all in the first floor. The rest of the secretaries are behind. So I, I'm not saying sitting is so important. What I'm saying is such a senior person now attends in uniform. This is the only country where the armed forces have been made bureaucrats. You have an additional secretary, joint secretary in uniform today, appointed by the appointments committee. And they are the ones who are actually taking the military decisions. The whole thing has changed. Military decisions are now being taken by uniformed leadership and not a bureaucrat who's come here for four years or three years and going back. Additional secretary, joint secretaries are serving three and two stars, Lieutenant General, Major General equivalent. The clearance speed has gone up because now you don't have to understand the subject. You know the subject. Yeah. You are yeah. far to clear it now. One of the chief attends the meeting with the PM. Serious enjoy status 12. PM, RM, like I've said, they all sit together. First hand information straight from the PM comes to the CDS. The transformation is happening at a very fast rate. After 19 years, the IDS has got a chief. All what IDS was doing is now got a stamp with authority on it. Some examples I've said. No, when the whole thing moved uh, this side on 1st of January, about 169 uh, directors and below personnel from the Department of Defense moved to DMA. And we, because the ACC had not cleared the appointment till then, so I was officiating as the additional secretary air, officiating because it was not, a file had to be coming to me. So one file came to me where they said, Ki, sir, ye pata nahi hai, ek caustic system and one uh, conference room is to build for so many hundreds of crores. So obviously we are not understanding what is it. I said, it's hanging for last four years with you. Why haven't you cleared it? Uh, sir, it, how can you make an caustic system and this thing so expensive in running into a couple of uh, crores, a couple of hundred crores? I said, you know where this caustic system and this thing is? He said, no. I said, Likha BBJ. So do you understand what BBJ is? He said, no. I said, have you seen Air Force One? He said, yes. I said, Air Force One is the, yes, yes, sir, the aeroplane where the president of USA flies. I said, BBJ is the Air Force One of India. So who would have asked for this ecosystem system? Oh, sir, we thought there is some hall which is to be, you know, now to find out what is going wrong, the file had some various yeah. observations and we cleared it within no time. So though the speed of decision making came up. Because you don't have simulator is required for helicopters. It is hanging for last seven, eight years, not realizing that the simulator coming will save the cost of aeroplane. The aeroplane life will be extended. Within no time, we cleared that file. The group captains were saying, so we are going old, we're sitting with this file and you cleared it within no time. So this is what transformed the well, two things. One, the decision making came to the uniform leadership. Second, now the job content was split between two secretaries. Earlier it was only one secretary doing it. He had so much to be done. This is how the transformation happened. But beyond this is the theater command. Abhi to we've talked and spoken about the uh, administration of the military. Now we have to get into war fighting of the military. The administration has been sorted out. And the war fighting should also be sorted out. Because you can't fight the war the way we were fighting till now. The army fights, right. navy fights, air force fights, and the end result is this. And we are happy with that end result. We, we've actually done well in all the campaigns which we've had. But how do we move ahead? So that is when comes the theater commander. So this is my perception. I've got no inputs from anybody. This is just my perception of how the theater command thing will work. When the CCS takes a decision that, yes, go ahead, we are now into war. He will give instructions to the COSC because that is where he, the RM will come and give instructions to the Chief of Staff Committee. Chief of Staff Committee will do the joint operation appreciation. Okay, now we're going to fight the war together. All four of us are sitting together, that is CDS and the three chiefs. What will be the joint operations? How will the commanders will estimate the situation? They do the military strategy objective. What is the step? Do we protect the land? Do we maritime borders? EZ, slog, go offensive, cold start. What do we want to do? They will decide all this. Center of gravity would have been already given by the government. And they will define the yeah. notion of victory. Like today, we still don't know what will be the notion of victory with Russia, Ukraine. When will Russia say, okay, I have won the war. So that has to be defined here. 
which will be through the CCS, COSC will do that. Now COSC will issue the op instructions to the theater commander, be it Eastern theater, Western theater, Maritime theater, whatever. Now theater commander will already have a joint op planning center where you would have had strategies, scenarios, and op orders, and everything will be ready with him. Now, as soon as this change scenario comes to him, which has come in the form of any op instruction, which has come from the COSC, he will quickly pull out his old scenarios and do the tweaking into that. And the strategies will be available. He'll modify the strategies to the new scenario. He is responsible for the tactical employment of the forces. He will issue mission objectives and op orders to the three commanders under him, the GOC, and C, FOC, and, C, and AOC. And C. Mind you, the war fighters are them. They are yeah. the ones who are going to fight the war. Nothing as per me is going to change as far as war fighting has come because it's, we are 14 and a half lakh soldiers. You can't just reshuffle them and say, okay, now this is how the cards will be. So war fighting will be done by them, but the joint planning center will decide how Army, Navy, Air Force is going to be jointly fighting the war. He will have an external connect where the intelligence will come from the NSCS, MHA, MEA, local civil military lives and NTR or DRD, whatever we have in this country, we'll all get together and acquit. For the vice chief. Contingency as of now. So now the vice chiefs are, vice chiefs have 300 crores, but they have to go through a lot of process. Those processes have been cut short. It was done in 2020 itself. He will have a situational room where all joint intelligence will be there, the ISCCS, MDA pictures, air defense. If at all we have an iron dome, BMD, military assets, where are the air assets? You know, he is the one who's going to take decisions. His tactical situation room in his theater will have everything. How the US satellite pictures, every joint op logistics, how what are the stocking levels? And if anything has to be brought from in fact, the entire war and mission progress battle assessment will be done by the theater commander in his theater, it will be a joint. Today you have a different op room for Army, Navy, Air Force. He'll Correct. have a joint op room. I, I've seen it in Norway. There is one joint room, one screen, which gives everything. You zoom out, you go into Air Force. You zoom in, you go into Army on the same screen. All this is being built. It is possible our country is doing it for them. It will do it for us. Our Bell and all team are very good. They are all uh, actually integrating maps. So all this is happening. All this has to happen to fight a war together. That is my theme. So this is how the whole thing will be. CCS will give higher, the COSC will walk the instruction, and the ex execution of war will be by three of them. I came up, Adi, with a new theme of smart theater command. This is a new concept which I've introduced. Unless you do all this, a theater commander will be lacking in his actual effectiveness. Communication. You have to have networks which can talk between Army, Navy, Air Force. Today we are lacking there. Capability building. What the PM said, that you can't move in isolation. A capability building has to be done together. CDS has already commenced that. And now we are going into joint capability building. Okay, this is the target. This is the threat. This is the capability required. Okay, Army, Navy, Air Force, this is what you will get. So, that we, so this kind of work has already commenced. Joint doctors and laws, acts, there has to be a joint act because theater commander is not controlling Army, Navy, Air Force. I've been in the tri-service heading one of the institutes. Very difficult to actually work on Army, Navy, Air Force acts and actually uh, run the show. A joint law has already been put in the parliament. Space cyber surveillance assets have already been clubbed. Integration has already commenced of that. Training and maintenance, a lot of things have to be joined up and joining up. Joint logistics. We have Most started important. joint logistics node. Mm. Joint logistics like Bombay, all the procurement of the following items, not all, of the following items will done, be done only by Navy. Air Force and Army is not doing it anymore. Similarly, in Chennai, it will be done only by Army for the Army, Navy, Air Force there. Similarly, in Guwahati, it is being done only by Air Force for Army and the Air Force there. So all this has already commenced, but it has to speed up because the networks have to join up. As a chain, Same, yeah. There's a lot mm -hmm. in common which can be shared. The world is moving toward 5G, IoT, AI, M2M. All this has to be done together now. Don't start individually. Start it together. That's what uh, this thing is. So go smart before joint theater command. Let's start thinking together. You have five think tanks. CAPS thinks the Air Force way. Yes. Navy thinks, the NMF thinks the Navy way. CLOS thinks the Army way. St. John's do the IDS way. Who's integrating them to get one answer? 
If this is the threat, okay, Air Force has said this. Who is now actually making the masala out of it? I think USA is also hanging fire there. USA can join up and say, okay, this is what the nation wants. This is what the military wants. Army, Navy, Air Force, yes, this is what their specialists have said. We have to plan and build capability together. ICAD is a thing, integrated capability development, which has already commenced, which will also give out the joint plans for the theater commander. We will identify the voids in the capability and then go in for acquisition accordingly. We'll have to train today. Army, Navy, Air Force, War Colleges have started mixing people around. Army officers come for the War College, Air, Air Force, this thing and so on. So all this has commenced. There is so much the Honorable Prime Minister who said is actually, you know, I've broken it down into think and plan, smartly share real time assets, smart and joint non-kinetic assets, common smart space exploitation. All this has to be done to actually meet what the PM said on 15th August 19. CDS has a lot to integrate. The work has commenced. Cyber has now got a common agency, disaster management, mobility, space, info sharing, supply chain, communication network, training, maintenance, intelligence, AI, M2M, service writing, acquisition, military diplomacy, capability building, HR, air defense, common military laws. You know, HR, no, I think some ACRs are also going to be common. Codification. Yeah. Codification means if, if, if this laptop in Air Force has so-and-so code, Navy has so-and-so code, Army has so-and-so code, you can't even actually sit together and buy it. There is a NATO code. So, you know, or let, let's say you want to buy a spark plug for a car. No, spark plug number to catalog number is different in Army, Navy, Air Force. There is an agency which is actually not doing a deconflict all this. So that you put Army code, you will get the picture of that item and Air Force and Army. I, I mean, there's a lot to be integrated. So this is what the functioning of a joint theater command depends on how smart it gets. So I mean, my... 47, you, you've taken us... This... I brought to how we go to... Ha, sir. I mean, this is a major question that I think anybody will, will get in his mind, sir. Is the factor that, you know, you've, you've shown us the change over the time and you've shown us how the structure has changed and everything like that. Uh, what gives? I mean, at the end of it, see, one of the biggest things people will ask is, yeah, good, hai, fair enough. A lot of people say, yeah, tak kyun hua tha, ye wo and all that. leaving all that aside, what has improved uh, in terms of ground deliverability uh, for three factors. One, planning, which is the most critical, uh, strategic planning, two, procurement and allocation, and three, uh, in terms of the, the you know, the, the, the just the structure. Has that structure been reduced to make it more efficient? How do you, how would you think, uh, tell us about these three things, sir? Uh, see, first of all, about the structure. Structure cannot uh, overnight reduce. Like we said, when the computers will come, the paperwork will reduce. The paper has, in fact, 10 times gone more because that, that's not... Uh, similarly, I'm saying structure cannot because of what fighting is... Okay, the drones come, the aeroplanes won't fly. It, it doesn't happen like that because if an aeroplane takes one pilot, drone takes three pilots on the ground. So pilots are going to increase with the drones and not reduce with the drones. And if drone is going to fly 48, 20, 40 hours non-stop, that means you're going to change a pilot every three to four hours. So yeah. you have to have so many pilots behind every drone, unlike a fighter aircraft. So it is not uh, so simple mathematics which can be applied here in the structure part. This is one. Secondly, okay, like uh, what were the uh, other two parts in your question? Nari? So how has it reduced the, I mean, improved the planning, the strategic planning? Okay. Okay, let's see. Because, the, you know, uh, the I look at it in, in a very small, simple way. If you just let me explain what I'm looking at. A country will have its strategic objectives or its strategic goals. From that strategic goals will come out the military objectives. From the military objectives will you come out with your military plan. And for that plan, you will actually start doing procurement and stuff like that. So how has this particular structure been uh, improved with the, with what we've done, sir? See this uh, thing about integrated capability development system, which we have now introduced uh, in 2020. What happens is all the three services sit together under the intelligence and find out what is the threat to this nation in a time frame of five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years from now. As of now, we are stopping ourselves for maybe 10 years. 
Okay, this is the threat which the nation faces from A, B, C, D adversaries or following things in the next 5, 10, 2, 5. We're not saying short term, long term, medium term. You can break it down in the number of years. Okay, this is what it is. To counter this threat, I mean, AV, Air Force, please tell us what kind of capability do you want? It has to be a joint capability because the threat was decided together by all three services. There is a committee which has been established under the CDS which decides what is the threat to this country. Okay, this is the capability required. This is what we already have. Okay, this is all. Oh, we already have this. Army will ask the Navy Air Force. Air Force will ask, it, oh, we already have this. Okay, then let's integrate it. How do we use it to counter this threat? Because now it's a joint threat. It's a joint capability which we're looking for. Now the plans will be made to use these three together. This is the void. This, this, this we don't have. Okay, this, this we don't have. Let's buy them. So that is when the acquisition moves. While going into acquisition, another role of CDS is, friend, hold it. Is any Indian firm making it? Now the IDS is trying to find out which Indian firm is making what, which is useful to the services. That maybe the manufacturer doesn't know that it is useful to the service, but you're going through everything and trying to find out, okay, this is useful to the services, so we join together. So all this planning under the CDS has already commenced. So the nation can be rest assured that all this is happening. The togetherness, jointness is happening. Structures were already there in the form of headquarter ideas. You know, there was a committee by the name of JOCOM, Joint Operations Committee. All which is to be done jointly for operations was decided by this committee where the DGMO, DGNO and DGAO, that means the three DG operations and the DCID operations of these ideas were together where DCID operations being the chairman of the four committee. All operational decisions which is between two services or between three services will be brought up here. About 90% of the decisions could be given by the four of them. Balance 10% because it's beyond their... Uh, we'll say great pay, it used to go to the wife chiefs committee. Now the wife chiefs are the operational commander. They will sit together and decide, okay, these 90% have been decided, be okay. Balance 10%, they will decide how to go about it. Maybe 5 to 7% they are able to solve there. Balance 3% jumps up to the three chiefs. This is now affecting the three services. Let's decide. Now this is there, the structure is already there. Same goes for appointments and everything. All these structures are already there functioning very well. But now you want a CDS, who's the boss of these uh, structures, and the nation be rest assured that things are moving towards that. Hmm. Now comes the theater they... commander making his war plans to execute a war against a particular scenario. That will happen when the theater commander comes. Whenever the theater commander is there. It will have to get integrated to the local environment, the local requirements, local this, local that, whole lot of uh, structures that would be needed to kind of uh, have it respond to certain things. Sir. sir, also, you know, there is there is obviously a lot of division of responsibility and that's, you know, probably the last thing I'll ask you. Uh, division of responsibility with these, you know, subsidiary organizations that are there, one reports to the MHA, one reports to this one, one reports to that one. It creates a whole lot of uh, this thing. Like in the east, you've got the Assam rifles, you've got the BSF. In the north, you've got the ITBP and the BSF. In the west, you've got the BSF. In the maritime area, you've got the Coast Guards. How, I mean, see, at the end of it, when you're trying to take out a whole strategic picture of, or a tactical picture of any area, when these kind of organizations are also involved in it, that tactical picture must also have a sharing of inputs and data coming in from these organizations. So that a complete picture comes out. That, I don't know, how can it happen when the structure is uh, off? Is there any plans for get th getting them uh, as part of the armed forces so that their, their, their integration is much better and the, the situation and the brief comes out a little more crisper? See, first of all, border management, fighting across the border, there are two different things. Fighting Defense and management, Hanji. So border management is the responsibility of BSF, ITBP, SM rifle, and so on. They, they are they're supposed to manage the border. But when it comes to war fighting across the border, that is when the military comes in. And mm. uh, if you remember the movie Border, which came, where uh, when Sunny Doyle moved in with the army, and uh, the BSF, which was their element, was actually the people who knew the ground realities, 
they knew what is happening across the border, what is happening in the villages. They became a part of this military operation. So all those plans are already written down. Who will come under whom? Who will work with whom? Who will have what kind of information? Today, the nation has such a beautiful information on intelligence system post Kargil and especially in the last 7, 8, 10 years. Anything, let's say if you've seen the uh, Chandigarh uh, picture behind, what is happening in Chandigarh? Every intelligence agency will have something which is happening in Chandigarh, let's presume. Maybe IV is doing something, PSF is there, but what, whatever, Home Ministry, which is, all this information in this country is collated together. So if you say Chandigarh, you will find so many agencies talking about Chandigarh and a storyline comes out of this and somebody is doing something on this. So don't worry that all, all this is actually integrated already, a very well meshed up. And uh, I, I mean, I'll just stop at this that, yes, all the information gathered about anything, any activity is beautifully integrated and one storyline comes out. I think that's that's one of the biggest things because most of the countries in the world that we see have this big, big issue in terms of too much intelligence and don't know what to do with it. Too much data and don't know how to process it. And that's something which which uh, obviously uh, not worries, but that's a thought that has a lot of uh, resonance with, with an analyst. Uh, sir, thank you so much. This has been a fantastic presentation to learn how the top defense organization works. Of course, the theater commands would be coming in sometime and there's some reports that by August something will happen. So your and my journey to understand and learn a little more is not going to be finished. I'm going to be disturbing Absolutely. you more and more so that we can we can know the insights and we can know what's happening and how this structure is going to come out because our threat perception is not going down. Uh, Pakistan's nuisance value would have gone down a little bit, but uh, the threat st is still pretty valid in terms of what they can do and uh, uh, in uh, in terms of uh, their, their, their collusion with, uh, with my best friend in China. So there is, of course, a whole lot that we need to deal with. So thanks so much once again, sir, and glad to have you on the, on the channel. Me. It'll be great to have you once again very shortly for another interesting episode. Till then, sir. Jai Hind. Thanks a lot, Adi. Jai Hind.